Hey, I'm the genius who recorded half a podcast without turning it on. And this is <laughs> Knitting Samurai Plus One, episode 15, Flash Gordon. I'm your host, Steph, and let's start over. <laughs> so, first off, I started actually with a true confession for you guys. I've been developing a lot of photos lately. It's become somewhat of an addiction, and it's spread. So not just do I develop photos, but now I make photo books. So instead of making the traditional scrapbook style baby book where you print the pictures and then post them in, I decided, oh no, I have to go over the top and um, make him a photo book with cute little sayings and lots of pictures and all kinds of good stuff. Look, it's us knitting together. So every background is different. This is from Shutterfly. Dot com. I love their website. You can change the layouts, you can change the backgrounds, do these little stickers. It's great. So I highly recommend it if you two have the uh, developing photo bug. So, true confession. But you're not here to listen to me confess things. You are here to talk about knitting. So, first up on the needles. Um, last time we talked about dishcloths. I was making some dishcloths and I'm happy to report that I have a little stack here. So I've done six of them completed so far. Knit on US size fives. I am using the just the kitchen cart cotton you get at Joann's. Give me a second here and I'll look at a label. So those are done. Ends woven in and everything except that first one or the last one. I am using sugar and cream kitchen cotton and I don't think I can get two this is the one I'm currently on right now I don't think I can get two of them per skein for the variegated but I can for the solid I weighed them that is the baby monitor it keeps clicking on I don't think it likes the camera running so I'm gonna turn it off hold on yeah so I can get two out of a solid skein but not out of the variegated ones they are shorter I was thinking that with my leftovers from the variegated because I don't want that sitting in my stash I would try and find like a mitered square washcloth pattern thinking that I can use the variegated on the outside edge and then for the inside do the solid so look for that next week we'll see what I come up with if you know of a pattern that's a variegated nope that's a mitered square washcloth pattern let me know I would really appreciate some help otherwise I'm just gonna take the pattern take one of the squares from the sock yarn blanket I was working on and adapt it to the right number of stitches and bang out some scrappy ones but we'll make a match and make them look pretty right so um that's dishcloth so then the other two things on my needles this week are new to you I believe I might have shown you these socks before I'm not sure I did 10 minutes ago before it shut off so <laughs> um this is loops and thread luxury sock which is a super fine merino nylon cashmere blend 30 percent nylon so um and then these are going to be my new afterthought heel socks my second pair um so you can see toe up front is ribbed back is solid it's sort of like a, a dark muted rainbow that's how i tend to think of it i really like the way that the Feral dyeing lined up right there. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, I have to go until seven and three quarters inches and then I will throw in the waist yarn and start doing the ribbing all the way around for the leg. Um, these are not for me and I know that the person therefore likes a shorter sock and yeah that's about it. So working on these another pair of socks not for me. This morning I was getting Roland dressed for the day and he has about a bazillion pairs of socks and really he has two pairs of smart wools and I think they're the one-year-old size and I know I spent a fortune on them I don't really want to buy them anymore but those are the only two socks that actually keep his feet warm you know you take off the baby socks and his little feet are still ice cold underneath so looking at that I was like oh man I've got some because they're elasticized and that's what makes them fit so well and that I think is part of the problem was part of the problem with all those baby socks I knit before he was born that they were not stretchy enough for a little baby 
fat legs and getting them over the heel and all that. So I think I have some elasticized yarn in my stash and I'm going to bang out a few pairs of socks for him to get him through the rest of the winter because, you know, sock knitter has big stash, doesn't need to spend money on, you know, fancy smart wool socks. Although I should. What's wrong with me? But, um, so those will be coming soon. Next, third up on the needles is in my new Pitaloop bag. Roland thinks this bag is the greatest thing on earth. He will just be like, ah, likes to hold it by the string. I'm of course supervising him because I'm afraid that one of the, one of the needle ends is gonna pop out. But, so it is a large one. And then here's the matching, the matching notions bag. So I've moved into that. I had the same little notions pouch that I just put in whatever bag was my main knitting bag at that moment. Um, I've had the same one for probably four years. So it was kind of sad to retire it actually. I retired it into the desk that we're sitting at. Here it is, there's my old one. So it's, it's definitely worn and faded and it was time for a new one. So here's the new one, there's the old one. The new one is very big. Can you tell I like red? It's a red day. It's around Valentine's Day, I guess. But, um, sorry, it's kind of loud. So new bag, woo, new bag. So I wanted to get another shawl on the needles and my mother has actually started wearing the Seaside Shawlette by Wendy Johnson that I knit her a couple Thanksgivings ago for Christmas. Yeah, so, and she confessed to me that her jacket is black and I knit her a brown shawl, which she thinks is a scarf. And so she couldn't wear a brown scarf with a black jacket. And so she just got a new white jacket and so now she's good to go. So thought about it, okay, she wants a scarf to go with her black jacket. And I picked out a bunch of really nice bright colored yarns that I had that were like, you know, aqua green and nice with cashmere blends. And then I thought about it, she didn't, wouldn't want to wear that so bright near her face. So I went back, looked again, picked out a more, it's blue, blues and purples, and it will match her eyes amazingly. So I'm hoping she'll like it next to her black coat. If not, well then I try again. <laughs> but this is the um, Dream in Color Smooshy with cashmere I, in the colorway Crystal Storm 509. I purchased this, a, I want to say a month ago, maybe two. Anyways, um, I really love this color. So I cast on, well, okay, back up. First, I started at Multnomah with the aqua, like the bright green color, and it was just too solid, and the Multnomah didn't have enough going on, so I ripped that out. Picked a this, which is much more variegated in the, because it has a lot of like tan and plum and gray and violet and then like a deep navy blue. Like there's probably five, six colors I could easily identify in this. So it's much more of a variegated yarn. So, but then I didn't want to do the Multnomah. I'd done that before. And the Age of Brass and Steam. Is it Age of Brass and Steam? There's a plane flying by overhead. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Age of Brass and Steam. You've probably, sorry, black and white print out, but uh, there you go. So it's a pretty simple shawlette. She bunches them all up and it's under her coat anyway, so why am I going to take the time to do some intricate lace that no one's ever going to see? So, and she was so funny, she was wearing it inside out. I didn't want to correct her. It's fine, she's wearing it. I'm happy for her. I'm happy she likes it. So this is, and I'm sorry, I'm halfway through a row. This is what I have so far. And I've pretty much been loving it. Like, it looks great. The pattern is for a DK, DK weight yarn, knit on size eight. Of course, I can't do what's called for. I would be too heavy for a scarf anyways, for her. So I am using, this is a fingering weight yarn, and I'm knitting on size fours, and I think it has a really nice drape to it. It's not too heavy, it's not too holy. Um, the pattern is dead simple. I love it. It's really easy. I can just motor along. I'm going to change this a little bit. She has the second section and the third section having the same number of stitches. I think that would be fine on size eights, but because these are smaller needles, it's going to be, it's not going to end up being a long enough, wide enough shawl 
So I'm going to make them get progressively longer and probably do four sections instead of the three that the pattern calls for. So those are my planned alterations. Um, I have been working on this while watching Downton Abbey. If you are not watching Downton Abbey, you need to get yourself up off your couch, go stream it on Netflix, watch it on PBS, whatever you need to do because it is such a delicious soap opera. <laughs> it's period piece soap opera. Oh my god, it's so good. Steve and I have been watching it together. He's even into it. Maybe you can get your guy into it. I guess the demographics, he was researching online, this is really highly rated among um, young men. And, and I was teasing him for that. And he, it's much more, ex, more interesting to young men than like a Jane Eyre novel would be or a novel adaptation would be. And I think part of it is that there are so many male characters and there's a diversity of them. Whereas like when you think about Jane, I don't know, there's usually like two men and the main characters are women. So this is a very good mix. Um, the upstairs storyline and the downstairs storyline of, you know, lords and ladies and their servants. So go check it out if you're not, but that's what I'm calling this. So I've been working on it while watching that and I love it. And I told you this was Dream in Color, and I think that's all there is to say about that. Um, I had been working on some secret knitting that as we last spoke, I was like, no, it's done, I'm not doing it. Okay, but then <laughs> last weekend, I made a big push, and I finished the whole thing, and it came out super adorable, and Linus had a photo shoot session with it before I packaged him up and sent him off to his new home. So here are some photos. So as you can see, that is a Louis the Love Bot by Rebecca Danger. I knit him with Patton's Croy Rag Shades. It's a self-striping yarn. I did, you know, manipulate the stripes a little bit on the arms. But other than that, I just let the yarn do the talking. And I knit it on US size ones. Um, I had a hard time with the color work. Again, that's what I was saying with the vest the other day. The color work is not coming out great lately. And I don't know if it's that I'm trying to do it in the round. I think that's the big miss for me on that but um yeah so I finished him and you know it was a challenge knitting so tiny like those i-cord arms are smaller than my finger I mean they are tiny arms so um but I would definitely knit him again I finished and I looked at Roland who was sitting at the bed watching me after he was all assembled and he has his little safety eyes and all that and I was like oh he could totally play with this and then I felt guilty and was like I need to knit, make him a monster so I may be making a love bot for my little guy in the near future so there's my secret knitting confession more confessions anyways um yeah, and I didn't want the person who it was for to see it. And within two minutes of me posting a picture in a discussion thread of it, she was all over it and just, she loved it. And oh my God, he's so cute. It's like, well, good, because he's on his way to you. <laughs> so I guess that means it was a good, a good choice for her. Anyways, um, moving on to the best knit along. So we have finished. I need to put this down. Oh, it's so nice to knit and talk to you. I wish I could. Um, there were 13 finished vests, so that's great. Um, I did, like, I'm stealing Fibernet's idea. Uh, because we had the discussion thread mixed in with the finished objects, I just pulled everybody, the post with pictures, their number, the post number, who posted it, and then reassign them a number from 1 to 11. Um, and I'm going to go to random.org and generate numbers that way, rather than, because there were 103 posts total and only 11 of them have pictures and are eligible. So we'd be sitting here with me hitting generate, generate, generate for quite some time. 
and that wouldn't be much fun to watch, would it? So, I'm sorry, a talking voice is for Roland. <laughs> So we are generating the first one. So the first prize is going to be, you can knit your very own Downton Abbey along with me if you want. Uh, this is a skein of the Dreaming Color Smushy with Cashmere. It's a sparkler. So this is the bright, bright fuchsia hot pink, pale pink plum yarn that I got at the same time as the other one. And that is going to go to Dun, 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 dun. Number five. I don't know if you can see that. And number five on our list here is post 56, Allison J. Congratulations, Allison. Yay. And for our second prize, which is going to be a Ravelry pattern of your choice, you just shoot me a line, tell me what you want, and I'll gift it over to you. Um, oh. We are going to go to, it is going to go to, do I have to start again? Come on. Da -da, technical errors, technical difficulties, please hold. Please hold. One more moment. Okay. And if Alice and Jay comes up again, I'm not going to Okay, so then it picks post 9, which is 9, post 93, 9 grands for grandma, I think is what her rav name is. So, ladies, get in touch with you. Oh, I'm, get in touch with me. I'm going to give you time to watch the episode and contact me and tell me your address and which pattern you want. So, congratulations. Yay! We had a napping malfunction. I had to run in there and fix things. We'll see if it holds. Uh, lastly, what came in the mail? Well, you know, last time I showed you the Angie goes around, Alicia goes around, sorry, Alicia goes around yarn. Yeah, I bought a few more skeins. So this is called Naval Campaign. I love it. It's a really beautiful uh, teal, of course with navy shots throughout it. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. So, uh, got this. And I also got Thrace, which is a deep red with black overtones. And you can, I can hear him crying. I don't know if you can, so I'm just going to rush through this. And then lastly, I got my uh, 3U's Hiawassee Creek Yarn Club. I got my second shipment, which is uh, Sangria U Bamboo, which is a 80% Merino, 20% Bamboo yarn. It's um, it's a red-pink color. I think it's another Valentine's Day themed shipment. So, there you go. That is what came in the mail this week. And I am going to go off and check on him and then do some knitting. And I hope you have a great day and get lots of knitting in yourself. All right. Take care. Bye.